Janelle Bakirova presents a series of discussions about the place of Kazakh culture in the global world. Meetings with prominent public figures, candid conversations, collisions of opinions, and discussions about the most important things. Hello, dear friends. Today our guest is Takir Balikbaev. For three decades, Takir Balikbaev has been one of the most respected and experienced professionals in the field of higher education. Thanks to his personal qualities, a high level of professionalism and natural intelligence, for me personally, he became a benchmark of a leader and a reformer. Over the years of working together, I've developed great respect and reverence towards him. Hello, Takir. Hello, Jania. Takir, I used to think that art, culture only covered creative specialties such as music, ballet, artists, film and theatre actors but over time I came to conclusion that culture is everything meaning that a person without a sufficient level of culture won't be able to achieve success in any area In my opinion, you're a real creative person from the educational field Please, tell us about your work in this regard and is it true that creativity is required in every occupation? A very interesting question. In fact, you are absolutely right. The concept of a creative person is not defined only by a narrow framework of culture and art or even, let's say, a certain profession or a certain occupation. Let's take this example. Archimedes, who shouted, Eureka, was taking a bath while discovering the law of physics. Would you consider him a creative person or not? In fact, he is exactly a genius. In this case, genius is based, on the one hand, on the ability to make a scientific discovery, and on the other, on the presence of a well-developed creative thinking. Unfortunately, I have not been involved in art, music, or anything like that, but I am really sure that our work, and in general, any work has some elements of creativity. I am a mathematician. When I was in graduate school and defended my candidate's thesis, I couldn't do without elements of creativity either. It is not enough to only repeat what other mathematicians have already done before you. This way you will achieve nothing. All new solutions appeared because of a creative approach, the same way they appeared in management and in many other fields. Therefore, I think that creativity should be the cornerstone of many decisions. Takir, it seems to me that the most important thing in management is the ability to communicate with people, the ability to convey the task to them, the ability to hear what they have to say, get them together and jointly promote a new idea. After all, in recent years, even for decades, we all have been in a constant process of reform. Did you feel any fatigue or something like that? You actually have this human talent. I've never seen you feel confused or especially tense. How did you manage it? I guess the root is somewhere in school. In math? Not necessarily in math. Our teachers also made their contribution to the development of our character. They were our prime example. It seems simple, however, a person who conducts lessons or lectures must be able to hold the attention of the entire auditorium. We both have seen such lectures. We have provosts who lectured us and we learned from them, and to some extent imitated them when we were getting some experience. I listen to lectures by our outstanding scientists at the Kazakh State University and then at the Moscow State University. It seems to me that this experience formed the basis of my teaching skills. When you teach yourself, you start to imitate your professors a little. Then you find your way. Over time, you already begin to feel the audience. You know something for sure, 
And then, as they say, you have different goals, you have to persuade, you have to listen to others. But the basis seems to me lies somewhere out there. And here I would also like to say that my father is a teacher. I very often witnessed how we work with students, how students came to our home and interacted with him. This ability to listen and patience probably takes root from my family. Over time, this example has reflected in my practice, and I probably did not learn all this in vain. You've foreseen my next question. Everything started in your family. That's how it was in a family. There was such a rule? Of course. What we have now, we were lucky to be born in the families of such parents. This is incredible happiness, and we just adopt not only what they say, but also how they behave. Tell us about your father in a little more detail. I say that my father was my first teacher for a reason. First of all, he is a math teacher. His entire life he taught only this discipline. On the other hand, he was my teacher in everything. He was the one who formed many of my spiritual qualities. After his work at school, he never switched off that part of himself when he came home to us. Teaching was his calling, it was in his blood, so to speak. That is why he encouraged love for education, for sciences in us, his children. He gave us a very serious foundation. In fact, he had two hobbies in his life, not even hobbies, but rather vocations. The first one is teaching and education, and the second one is singing. We lived in a small village. There were about 70 to 80 houses. We had an ordinary eighth-grade school. And so together with his two colleagues, my father started a music ensemble called Guldirai. And for about several years, this ensemble was very popular throughout the entire district and almost the entire region. They also taught others how to both dance and sing. Since there were no specialists, naturally they had no school or professional teacher. And your father? They were able to do something like this. And, as a result, there were many young people who sang and who subsequently went on to study music professionally and so on. But unfortunately, he taught other children, but not his own. Therefore, I can neither play musical instruments nor sing. I feel like you belittle yourself since you're talking to a pianist. <laughs> yes, but it's true, I really can't. From the very beginning, I had a focus on math, on technical part, and of course, it had a serious influence. And of course, my father was such a strong example for me. I always remember his words and how he devoted himself to teaching. How hard he tried to help all the children in the village to study so that they could get a higher education in the future. This had an incredible impact on my life. He was such a natural educator. What do you think about people of culture, since your dad certainly was fond of music and you grew up in a musical environment, but what do you think about the representatives of the cultural sphere? Are they a special kind of people? Now, of course, it's easier for me in this regard. I have a rich life experience and I know many people of art. I know you, I know Ayman, for instance, and many others, musicians, artists, and writers. And we always have something to talk about. But I would like to give you one example from my early childhood, which is very important for me. There was such a movie, My Name is Clown. Clown? Yes, Clown. My Name is Clown is an Indian movie. And there's such a scene, he is a clown, he plays on stage, and at first, they show how easy and fun everything is in his life. But at some point, he has a very difficult performance and his mother is present among the audience. During his performance, he falls down from a great height. And has he fallen to his death? No, that's the whole secret, that he falls down, but this is part of the script, of the play. But his mother did not understand it, and her heart stopped beating, and he needs to complete the act. 
She needs to play his part to the end, but his mother dies. Did he see it? Of course. People immediately saw it. She was taken away. There was a short pause. But he needed to continue his performance, and he went on, and it was just a shock for me then. Why? Because I was small at the time. It was either fifth or sixth grade. That he should have stopped everything? Before that, I thought that artists in general, they just entertain people and that's it. And then I saw that it was not so... The drama of the profession. That they have everything in their lives, the drama, the tragedy, and you need to go through all this and at the same time create your art professionally. It shocked me to the core very much then, and then I began to see confirmation of this everywhere. I see... At what cost? Yes, at what cost they do it. Therefore, I have a lot of respect for people of art. When I hear that representatives of art or science are compared, I always say you cannot compare them. If they do their job professionally, it really is their whole life. And we must respect them for what and how they do it. And there are a lot of examples when people make such huge sacrifices, not for the sake of money or fame, but because of their great devotion to art, to be at the art service. I will not name names. I see it now, I understand it and respect it very much. Скажите, пожалуйста, Хирспанович, вот мы, с одной стороны, 
Takir, here we are on the one hand, a young country, and the process of identification seems to be going on, and in no way it should be fast. We're rethinking our history, we perceive our culture anew, we want to learn a lot about our traditions, mentality, and now the Kazakh language is developing so rapidly. On the other hand, the world is moving at such a speed that we must also keep up with the global trends. In your opinion, what should be the ratio of the national share and the international share in our country? What it should be? What do you think? Вот в нашей стране как должно быть, как происходит? Что вы думаете? When people ask me this question naturally as a mathematician, I'm starting to think 30, 40, or 50 percent. But in the end, it shouldn't be counted in any percentages. In fact, there should be some natural combination of both national and international. It is impossible to separate them from each other let alone close oneself from the international influence. If we're talking about art, then, at the moment, we have many young people who, with their creativity, may not fit the usual concepts of traditional music, but they are already famous not only here but also on the international arena. Dimash Kudaibergen and Iman Berg are perfect examples. There are other examples among young people. Just recently there was a festival of arts, Slavyansky Bazaar in Vitebsk, where the main prize was won by the Kazakh girl, Ruhia Baidukenova. When our young people reach such a level, it becomes very difficult to characterize them. What genre do they belong? Is this a national school? Well, probably not, or at least not only. On the other hand, is this a completely international school? Not necessarily. It means that only when we work in cooperation and in integration everything works out. We're not losing the national color and at the same time, we are gaining a lot from the international influence. And only in this way do we win when we take everything that matters and multiply it. Takir, of course I enjoy talking to young people, but it is a special pleasure to talk with my peers. In the end, we share a common life and professional experience. How do you cope with these challenges of time, with its speed, so many technological innovations appear, practically a new era is coming, a digital era. How do you feel about it? How do you find harmony in today? Well, I can't say I'm with you on this. In general, I think that now is a great time. With its speed, with its novelty, which manifests itself almost every day, technologically, socially, and in many other ways, I think this is a very great time. Therefore, I do not feel like I have to somehow adjust to it and so on. On the opposite, I believe that this particular time presents us with new ideas, technologies, new performers, and so on, which unleashes out potential and helps us to achieve a lot. I think it's great that we have all these opportunities and it is all because of this particular time. In the educational sphere, there is an abundance of technologies. At the moment, technologies, especially in learning languages or sciences, makes the whole process of learning a lot easier. The only thing you need is to do it systematically, then you will succeed. Therefore, I believe that this particular time doesn't burden us with tons of intractable challenges. It's quite the opposite. I feel like it opens many opportunities in front of us. What do you think of young people? I know that you're not the kind of person to say that it used to be better before, but now everything is bad. Nevertheless, how would you characterize today's youth? Do they need an aesthetic education? Do they lack it today in such a technological time when they are all immersed in their gadgets? This is such a different generation. I think very well of young people. They are very good. But what do I see? I speak from my experience as a provost who has been working at the National University for four years. Naturally, I mainly see young students who are engaged in science and so on. Well, I also see young people among my loved ones. I can't say that I see a lot of them. 
or all of them. Yes, all of them. But on the other hand, what I see makes me feel optimistic and enthusiastic. Why? Because first of all, young people have a thirst for knowledge and it manifests itself in different ways. They want to learn something and this is not limited only to studying at the university. They are open to new things and through them, they try to learn a lot while creating something on their own. At the moment, there are many young people who are already able to achieve great success and are trying to achieve more. These opportunities we have today, they help them to develop further and sometimes show them how to do it. Big opportunities open the world in front of young people. Our young people are very progressive and they're very knowledgeable. Yes, sometimes we think it used to be better than it is now. Of course, there are differences. Many young people don't read classical literature anymore. I can't say this about myself either. Maybe today is the time for a different literature. On the other hand, it is hard for me to say that intelligence and overall erudition is lower now since I see many young people refute this notion. As for aesthetics and culture, it is all important and we must teach it to our children. In this case, I believe that the cultural education in particular should start from school. At one time, the subject of culturology was introduced in schools, but then it was combined with some other subject that is more suitable for philosophers, whereas culture should be taught, shown as much as possible. In this way, we will be able to bring up a whole generation of art connoisseurs and spectators who will be able to appreciate the art paintings and who will be able to evaluate their essence because we need both. Now we have all this on the internet, you can get an access to a lot of information, but on the other hand, it is not always easy for even experienced people to navigate it or figure it out. Therefore, if in the education system, in the upbringing system, we give some directions that subsequently develop the aesthetic taste or knowledge of the culture, its foundations, history, then this is already a worthy effort.
Everything turned out as I expected. I had a great pleasure, Takir, from this conversation. I miss the days when we worked together, but nothing prevents us from discussing interesting things, from planning some exciting projects and events. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jania. I am also grateful to you for today's meeting, for this conversation. It turned out to be very interesting and useful. I thank you for such a great work. I wish you only success. Thanks.